everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Well, let's be honest. We've done about 1,600 videos now, and there's probably, you know, good percentage that are interviews with incredible artists and producers and engineers and studio tours. But there's also a schnizzle ton of uh, tuition videos and plug-in reviews. And uh, you know what? There's a lot of videos and we love doing them. A theme recently seems to be on the Oak Sound, or as I believe it's pronounced, OX Sound. The Soothe 2 has become, I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it, the industry standard now with so many producers, engineers, and mixers are using that to get rid of harsh sounds and de-essing in a far more sophisticated way, and particularly on vocals, other instruments as well. It's become kind of a standard, really, frankly. Now we're in a situation where I get asked every single day about the Spith plugin. And we have already reviewed it, but we went back to Oak Sound, to Oak Sound, and said, Would you do a giveaway of three copies of Spith? And they agreed to do it. And we also got a couple of other rather wonderful people Adam at Hot Pulse Studios, and of course, our very good friend, Mr. Matt Lang, to also give us their particular take on this plugin. So, Without further ado, let's get stuck in and try it out again and give everybody, ourselves included, a refresher on why Spith is such a good plugin. And of course, you can enter to win one of three copies down below. And uh, let's get stuck in. We have a track by the lovely London Lawhan called Back to You. You can, of course, download the multi tracks down below. So please download them. So let's give it a listen. It's the lonely that she. Okay, I like it a lot, the mix. The vocal does definitely feel like it's being clamped down quite heavily. One of the beautiful things about Spith is it is a, it's kind of a transient designer in some ways. They call it an adaptive transient processor. And the reason why it's more than just a transient designer is because it can be frequency conscious. So if we take this section here. It's the lonely that she so I've got a lot of compression. I've got some DSing going on it. I've brightened it up, but let's grab Spiff. So here it is. It's resizable. Got small, large, medium, huge. <laughs> Here's huge. All right. It's the lonely that chills my bones, and it's the scars that hide the truth. But it's my heart that makes me run right back to you. Obviously, that's really exaggerating some of the high mid kind of attack, but just for the heck of it, let's boost it up and check it out. It's the lonely that chills my bones. I think I want to do the opposite. So I'm going to bring that back down to where it defaulted. Um, and then I'm going to go to cut. It's the lonely that chills my bones. Immediately better. And it's the scars that hide the truth. But it's my heart that makes me run right back to you. I'm actually going to turn. That my I'm turning off the high, the, the mids. All right, so what it's doing is it's controlling excessive kind of low mids and mids. I've got this set here at 450, 435, whatever, 450, 170. And where she tends to get maybe a little bit like war, it's beautiful. It's just cutting that. Let's put it in the track. It's the lonely that chills my bones. And it's the sky. Chills my bones And it's the sky 
Krista Tepp. What I like about this a lot is when you get overly compressed vocals, and there's a lot of compression going on here, and we could be removing that, but let's just pretend that it's been sent to us like that because I do get stuff that's sent to me all the time, which is annihilated with compression. Two things you can do is you can find um, transients in some of the upper mids and maybe boost them a little bit to get that vocal to come forward a little bit. But what's happening here, and very, very common with very compressed vocals, is it all starts to sound a little like this because all the low mids in the voice are now very, very loud. And, and it sounds, I'm going to use words here to describe, woolly is one way of describing it. It's like a buildup of low mids. And, and when you do something where you go in there and just kind of put a Band-Aid on it, meaning just cut a big low mid scoop out, sometimes the vocal is going to sound perfect. And but probably more frequently, it's going to start to sound really overdone and hollow. But because this is intelligent, so it's cutting. I've got the depth up pretty strong. I'm really going for it. Resolution, I can go to ultra. Let's go to really super high. Oversample, turn it to four up. Phase, linear. Let's see. I don't know if it's going to delay it a lot, but let's have a listen. It's the lonely that chills my bones. It's beautiful. And it's the scars that hide turn it off. It's an intelligent EQ. So it's cutting where there's excessive low mids and low end that's building up and making us sound a little woolly. Hopefully that's not going to annoy people. There's so many ways to describe stuff. And it's just doing wonders. And I've gone, I've maxed out 100% mix, resolution, ultra, oversampling times four, window, uh, oh, I don't know, make that long. I'm, make, I'm making it work really hard. I wanted to see whether, frankly, it was going to... Um, cause a massive latency, but not. It's the lonely that chills my bones And it's the scars that hide the truth But it's my heart that makes me run right back to you It's the lonely that chills so really, really fantastic. Between Soothe and Spiff, you can really do some incredible things. You know, the danger is, of course, with tools this fantastic and this sophisticated, if you put this on everything, you'll make everything sound too perfect and smooth. You need to be listening for places where there's problems and then sort of take it from there. All right, on the outro, we have a guitar line here, which is two DIs. Um... They've got a guitar amp on them. They've got an IR loader on them for an impulse response. And they've got some compression. They've got some EQ. But I often get given guitar sounds like this, and I want to help articulate the transients. Let's have a listen in the track. Now I can mute them. And you miss them. So I miss them when I mute them, but all I'm hearing is like, oh, rum, 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 rum. and it's nice to have some low mids, but wouldn't it be good to just see if we can pick up some of the pick attack? So let's see. We'll drop it into solo, which isn't necessarily how I would listen to it, but for, for us to reference, let's grab Spit there and see if we can just bring out the articulation of the attack of the guitar. Mute. Bring it back in. You definitely hear that attack now, probably quite exaggerated, but it's here in the, tr in the track. Bypass. Back on. Bypass. Back on. Truth, 
So it's great. It helps give that a little extra movement so the guitar track isn't just doing a mid-range kind of rum, rum, rum. It's actually a dee, 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 dee. You can hear the pick attack. It's a really interesting way of working because it's an intelligent EQ in many ways, isn't it? Because it's boosting transients. The transients in this instance are all in the high mids that we're grabbing. So it's EQing it. It's making it a little bit more exciting. It's giving extra movement. Really fantastic work. Okay, so that's two different things. Let's check out the piano for the same thing. Very dark piano. Um, the EQ is some low cut and then a big boost at like 3K, like a huge boost at 3K. Let's see if we can grab the high mid attack on the piano and boost it. Bypass, back on, quite dramatic. Bypass. Back on. So it's almost like taking a kick drum and boosting just the snap on the kick drum. You know, we're dramatically on a, sorry, on a kick drum, we might boost 50 or 60 hertz, then cut some 350 or some, you know, some low mids out and then boost 2.5 or even as much as 7K and above when it's like a metal kick. And what does that do? What that does is we get the weight of the kick drum, that, but we add a nose to it, like a point to it, as it were, so that you can identify the low end because you hear the ooh, 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 put a bit of snap on it. And we're doing the same thing here with the piano by just taking the attack of the piano and boosting it. So suddenly you identify that there's a piano playing. Have a listen again. Now listen again, with it bypassed, I haven't changed the volume of the piano at all. Just now the high mid transients that we've, the attack on the piano now has been muted. There's moments just there where the piano it wasn't even really audible. Now it was audible because if I mute the piano, you'll notice that something has disappeared. So let's mute the piano. Bring it in. You've heard it being added. Now let's put the plug in on now. So what's gorgeous about this? Well, what's gorgeous about it is we're only identifying the attack. We could go in there and boost the high mids and the, everything above it, which would be beautiful and would give us a similar desired effect, but it would be changing the whole nature of the sound of the piano, not just exaggerating the attack of the piano. And this is something I think would be a really, well, definitely is a really good tool for when you've got a mix and you love it and you love, say, the sound of the piano all the way through the whole song and it's feeling really great, but the mix starts to get dense. This is like, well, you could just exaggerate the attack for just those moments. So you could automate it, turn on the piano, the transient boost of the piano just for that section. Really, really smart tool. So let's go and check out Matt Lang giving us his take on the spiff. Hey folks, Matt Lang here. This is how I'm using Oak Sound Spiff. It's a really powerful processor. So check out this demo track I made and then we'll break down how I'm using Spiff. All right, so let's take off the pad. Uh, I just want to have some kind of harmonic context and it's a nice chord progression, but these are just the drums now.
And if I bypass all of my spiffs and make it less spiffy, if you will, it sounds like this. So the more spiffy version is a lot tighter and I like that. So let's go into how I'm using this on the individual channels. First of all, let's look at the kick. So this is my kick drum. And let's just select that area. Without spiff, it sounds like this. With spiff. So it's adding quite a lot of body. And how is it doing that? So I'm using it in boost mode first and foremost, and I'm adding just a little bit more of uh, the transient right at 75 hertz, which is, you know, just like the, the low end, the sub of this kick. And it's a pretty subby kick, it's electronic. Um, and if you just listen to that frequency itself, that's what's getting added more of. And then I'm also doing a bit of this high end, which um, is actually surprising because you would think that there really isn't anything at say 13K in this kick drum, but apparently there's something because this is what's going on. So it's a little bit in there. And then I didn't really want to add anything in uh, the mid range. So I just have that ducked out. Um, but then if we hit the Delta feature, which is going to show us the difference of, you know, the entire, uh, everything cumulatively, what's being added back in, that's Delta. This is what we get. So that's almost like a kick drum in its own right. And that's being added on top of the original source. So it really makes that kick quite a lot punchier. Once again, here's without. Here's with. So that's awesome. Now, I also have an 808 layered underneath um, the kick, that. And the way I'm using spiff is actually a little bit less traditional. I mean, I am using it as a transient designer, so to speak. But what I'm doing, I'm actually taking off the attack. And the reason for that is I don't want the attack to conflict with the kick drum itself. So if uh, we play them together, they sound really smooth, and that's why I am using spiff in this way. I'm using it in cut mode, and I have it slammed pretty hard. And I'm also focusing a little bit uh, on this area at 1.4K, because that's kind of where the pop of the kick drum is. So if we solo that, it sounds like this. Right? So uh, I really want to make sure that doesn't really, again, conflict with the kick drum transient itself. And if we bypass it, this is what it sounds like without spiff. It's got that pop. Now we unbypass it. And we add the kick back in. If we bypass it. There's like a little bit of friction right there. So. That just smooths it out and it works really well. So that is spiff in a different kind of way. And then I also have spiff now on these claps. And let's just use this section of the clap. And what I'm doing, I'm really using spiff to add some more body into the attack of the clap. So without spiff, it sounds like this. with spiff. So it's this low end information right here. It's at 95 and I pushed it pretty hard and that's just giving me some more just thickness and body to the clap itself. And then I'm also adding a little bit of this more mid range, uh, it's at 600. And then I'm using the filters, which are really handy because what I love about the filters here I can then say I don't want anything above what frequency is this 1.4k 1.5 nothing above that is going to be affected by spiff because otherwise if I pulled it up we're getting you know there's some boosting of the frequencies right around here I don't want that I just want that low that low end and low mid 
So if we hit the delta again just to see what Spiff is adding, it's this. So that's really effective just to make really a sound that doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, of body in it. Just gives it a little bit more oomph. And so I'm loving that. That's great. And then I love the ability of the filters because you can really, I use that basically as like setting my stage of between the high pass and low pass. I can just focus in on the frequency range that I want to affect and, um, and then therefore not affect the rest of the signal. So that is awesome. I'm a big fan of that. And you'll see there are two claps. The only reason is because the other clap has a send on it. As opposed to automating a send, I just created a separate track and put the send on the separate. So nothing to see there. Um, the snare drum, however, this, uh, this is from a modular synthesizer. It's just like your basic like 909 808 style snare. It sounds like this. So let's see what Spiff is doing. And Spiff is adding quite a bit of attack. I'm using it in boost mode and right in like the noise pop area of the snare and also in the body of the snare. So without Spiff, it sounds like this. With Spiff. And I pulled the gain down because I really added a lot of attack and I was clipping. But, um, and the other thing I do also is I have a, a saturate by Newfangled Audio at the end of it just to actually bring the level back up. But, um, and this is a fantastic saturator. So side note, probably my favorite clipper, saturator, what have you. Um, but Spiff is what's doing really like the snappiness of this. So once again, let's go to, let's see what, you know, it's going on at this, you know, the snap 2.7K area. So that's getting added. So that the very end, you just get that, it's like a click and it's nice. And I'm doing the same thing with uh, the low end information here. Bring it back up. So you really get some nice body in that snare there. And so that's what I'm doing with the snare. Then it goes through a reverb. But um, next, let's look at the hi-hats. And the hi-hats are also getting spiffed out. And spiff is being used to take out kind of like a slightly piercing frequency. And here's how it's working. So let's bypass it. Actually, let's use these snares. Or There we go. So that's the one I focused on. So it's really just making that a little bit smoother. That frequency right there, that's what we're taking out of that transient. And once again, I use the filter here because then you can see the rest of the, like, the signal is actually getting affected a little bit, even though I have these bands disabled. So bring up the high pass means I'm only going to affect this frequency range and that works fantastically. And it just smooths out the hi-hat a little bit. It's not extreme, but just makes everything sit a little bit nicer and like we, or like has been spoken many times, you know, it's a lot, really what makes the biggest difference is a lot of little moves. And once you add them all up together, it sounds fantastic. And then I have some grainy stuff. And what is grainy stuff? This is grainy stuff. So it's just some glitchy percussion. And once again, I'm using the cut mode. You can see I've used the filters really just to isolate this one area that's centered around 3K. And here it is without spiff. And with spiff, it's just smoothing this out. So, that kind of nasal range, took that out.
So it works great. Um, that's Spiff, and that's how I'm using it on the glitchy granular stuff. Um, and the nice thing I should mention also is I do like the weighing of decay of low frequency versus high frequency, because this way I could really like tune how quickly those highs um, really that's the transit information, especially with something where it's very quick like this. Um, it's nice that that's longer. That makes it a little bit tighter. So let's see. So it's handy, works great. And now let's talk about this shaker because this is actually uh, a different way of using spiff and uh, it was very much a happy accident and I'm very pleased with how it happened. So I'm going to take off all the plugins and this is the shaker naked. Just sounds like some bit crushed noise. And with some EQ and a little bit of reverb, sounded like that. And then I added spiff, and originally um, I was using it, you know, in the more traditional way of like, I just want to clean it up a little bit, clean up that mid range and of the attacks and see what happened. And then I hit the delta. And I thought, oh wow, that sounds way more interesting to me. And as you can see, you know, I was doing the filters and doing the usual spiff thing. But then I thought, all right, well, I want to add some more texture underneath it and let's feed more texture into Spiff and see how that affects it. So I pulled up Fragments by Arturia, which is a granular delay buffer um, granular processor. It's really incredible. And so what I ended up doing, I basically, um, I'm feeding it through this thing and I'm pitch shifting up the grains by, was it 14.1 semitones? And this is what's getting added back into the signal. So then that goes into spiff. Without the arteria, the fragments. But, so the granular stuff then getting fed into just the delta mode itself, you get this really nice textural, just very, and it's very wide also, but just weird, almost spectral sounding um, shaker, if you will. And so I just added some reverb just from the Eventide Ultra Reverb and that old friend. And it sounds really cool. So that was my happy accident with Spiff. And also you can see I was putting the depth all the way up because I wanted it to be as extreme as possible. So I want all of that. So that's basically all the individual tracks, but then there's one other thing I did and that is using Spiff as in parallel actually as like as a parallel transient adder, if you will, a transient designer, but I'm adding the transient. So let's call it a transient otter, uh, adder, not to be confused with a transient otter. That is an otter without a home and that is sad. So, or maybe he chose not to be a home or not to have a home. Maybe the log floated downstream and he went with it. Then maybe it's seen as a moving home. So that's an okay thing. Um, less sad, I digress. Anyway, aside from transient otters, uh, here's what I am doing with this. Without the parallel, here's with it. This, this signal right here is what's being added back into my drum bus. And there is a little bit of saturation going on from saturate, but this is spiff. And I'm using the delta mode again. So here are the transients being crushed and you can see that, you know, there's some low end stuff going on here at 62 and some right here at that three end, that punch. I didn't want to affect the low mids. So those are pulled down a bit, but then we hit the Delta and 
you can also see that I, I played with the decay just a bit, at least on the high lows, just to find where it you know felt the best. I found it. Like you get a lot more of the snare there. That's all kick. I found around here. That felt good and the decay. That's roughly what it is. And now let's add it back into the signal. So here it is without any of the parallel. And just add it back. It really does add a lot of punch. It's fantastic. So um, that is how I'm using Spiff, and it's a really powerful plugin. Like I'm actually, I'm really impressed by it, and it's something I'm going to use a ton of. So um, that being said, you should totally check it out. It is really creative, and I love the Delta mode. I mean, that's really as like a sound designer, that's really creative for me. And as you can see, how I was dealing with the shaker with then you know choosing. When you have the delta, you know, the choices you will make of what you choose to feed into it and then manipulating the signal before you feed that into Spiff, it just opens up a whole different world of creative opportunities. So I love it. It's super fun. And I'm just going to leave you with my little demo just looping in the background. And you should go give Spiff a look because it is an extremely powerful tool. See ya. I hope you enjoyed Matt's take on using Spiff. Let's check out Adam's take on it. Hello again, Adam Steele here, and I am at my desk with Reaper and the latest song that I made uh, for, you may have seen this on the uh, Evo 16 video. This is the song I made for that, and it's got Spiff about nine times over this, and I've used it in some very interesting ways. Uh, the first way that I've used it is just on the master bus. Um, I've got a couple of nice uh, kind of compression and saturation plugins and even Soothe on the master bus. Uh, so that's making everything nice and cohesive, but also the, the mix is just a little flat and needs a little bit of work. So I've disabled it here and I'm going to hit play and then enable it. And you should hear the kick and the snare and everything just pop out just before the limiter, just that little bit more, which should shift the balance slightly. It's the slightest thing there, but it just is bringing out that boom di boom di boom di and just letting that drum and bass feel come through all the time. What else did I do? Uh, the out kick mic, because um, this is a real drum kit, even though it's drum and bass. Um, I wanted the, the out mic on the kick. It was a bit boong, boong, and I wanted a bit more oomph from it, but not overly. So this is off. And that's on. It's a tiny change. And again, on the top of the snare, um, I used it to bring out on the top of the snare some of the crack, uh, but not too much of the dish in the bottom end because it was a bit overbearing. So again, without. And there we go. So blending that in with the rest of the kit. It sounds like this. With that. And then.
and you'd say, oh, he's just added a sample on the snare. Well, it is drum and bass, but also using Spiff has allowed me to carve the snare top and snare bottom reel mics with all the little shuffles and all that kind of stuff around the sample. Without them, the real snare kind of gets lost and then there's no feel to it. And so without Spiff, they sound like this. And with. And you can hear that is coming out more uh, without me having to add extreme EQ and end up with ringing and cymbal bleed and nasty artifacts that you get from just a simple process. Spiff makes this easy whilst being a very complicated little trick. One last little trick that I'll show you is I did the opposite. I used the cut function in Spiff on one of these guitars instead of a boost. So this guitar is very spacey, very dreamy. In the mix, I was finding that the little pick hits were standing out of the mix in a really weird way. So let's turn off Spiff and hit play and then turn on this cut and it'll just become a nice wash of guitar without those little pick noises coming through. Again, all these tiny little things that are adding up to become that extra 5 to 10% on a mix that take it from good to really good. Back to you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget you can win one of three copies of Spiff. Thank you, OX Sound, for letting us do that. I really appreciate it. So long, farewell, Alvida Zayn, au revoir, adios, adios, goodbye.